All right, students, here we go looking at a ball thrown straight up into the air. I know this picture doesn't look like it's straight, but that, that's because things are changing over time. It's kind of stretching out the curve because in reality, the ball just goes up and comes right back down. But what we're looking at is kind of as time passes. For example, here at the very beginning when the ball is at the bottom before it's even thrown, time is zero. Then when it hits the ground, that's a few seconds later. But we're mostly interested at these two points right here in the middle. Uh, and they're the points when they pass right by the camera. And from watching the video right before this, hopefully you saw that, uh, you got some information from that. Uh, now we're going to break down the math and see how it's actually useful. So the first idea is, again, keeping in mind that the horizontal axis we're looking at is time and the vertical is kind of our height. Uh, we'll call that y for now. And there's this model of a, an equation. It's a quadratic equation, something that has an x squared in it, an x to the first power, and then a third constant term as well. But this general term here is actually something you would find in most physics textbooks. Uh, it's something pretty common, a very common application with this type of calculation. And it's just 1 half g x squared plus vx plus h. Okay, so what is all this junk all through here? So the first thing, g, that kind of makes sense, is gravity. Uh, you can't have stuff thrown up in the air and not come back down. Gravity is pulling it down. And this negative sign in the, the front of it is actually the negative acceleration pushing it back towards the, its original position. Okay, and then the second term has this V in it. And that's not really a variable. It, it is a constant. But we don't know exactly what it is, at least not yet. It's the initial velocity. Uh, and velocity is just a fancy way of saying speed, but velocity actually has attached to it uh, which direction you're going. So positive would be up and negative would be down. And then we look at the initial height that the ball is thrown from because if it's super high then we're going to add a constant on the end. If it's actually below the uh, level that's being measured from, which it is in this case, that's going to be negative. So notice here down at the bottom that the h is negative and then up here uh, what else do we have? That the initial velocity is actually going to be positive. So velocity is going to be greater than zero because it's going up. And up in math calculations would be positive. All right, so let's, let's break it down quite a bit here. Uh, when did we see that the, time, the, the ball passed the camera on the way up? The first time it was at 0 0.4 seconds or just 0.4. And the second one was when it was going down. And that was at 2.0 seconds exactly. Now, you, of course, you know, we're kind of measuring this in an amateur way. We don't have tuned instruments, but we're pretty close. We slowed the camera down to take a look at that. So I'm going to put these two numbers in here, and then we're going to see what we can do with them. So we've got 0.4 and 2, or 2.0, pretty much the same thing. So let's see what we would get from this if we were to kind of multiply things out. So we're going to multiply first the two binomials. So the first one, um, I'm not sure, did I say x or t? Oh, these are t's. Good. Just making sure. So we have t, and then we had minus 0.4 was the first one, and the second one was t plus 2. All right. So if we do this multiplication, we just kind of multiply the two parts together. t and t multiplied make t squared. Negative 0.4 times t is going to be negative 0.4t. That's pretty straightforward. And 2t is just 2t. And then the last one down here, 0.4 times 2. Well, let's do some decimal calculation here. It's been a while since some of you might have done this. We do 4 times 2, that's 8. That's easy, but this decimal is going to make that 0.8. Okay, so we have 0.8, and is it positive or negative? Well, I have a negative times a positive, so that's going to wind up being negative. So that gives me t squared minus 0.4t plus 2t minus 0.8. Okay, now, in the middle here, these middle two terms, those are common, They're, or like terms, I should say. And so those can be combined. And don't be too hasty. You don't want to say 4 and 2 make 6, because this is a point 0.4. So that's really, and it's negative as well. So that's really going to combine and make 1.6t. Then we got a minus 0.8 over here, and a t squared to start. So this, so far is the two binomials multiplied. But we're not quite done yet. So, and it's mentioned here, you're going to multiply the constant in front in the next step. So let's go and do it. We've got to remember this piece right here. t squared plus 1.6t minus 0.8. So 
we have t squared plus 1.6t minus 0.8. All right, now that we have that, uh, we got to multiply that constant out front, which was negative 1 half g. Well, it depends on what part of the world you're in. If you're in a place where they're going to be using feet, uh, then you'd be negative 16, because it's really 32, but then half of that is 16. Similarly, if you're going to be doing it at a place where they measure meters, uh, it's going to be negative 4.9. Well, I'm going to use feet. Why? Uh, I don't know, because I want to. And it's a negative out front here, so we've got to keep that in mind as well. So let's see what we would get. And honestly, you know what? We don't even necessarily need this. Where, what am I missing? Oh, you know what? I made a huge mistake. Huge mistake. Gracious people. Goodness gracious. Look at this. T minus 0.2, T minus 0.4. Let's fix it. That means that this down here is going to be minus which makes this minus, which changes the number in the middle, by the way. And the number at the end. That's going to be a positive 0.8. And this is going to be negative 0.42, negative 2t, which makes negative, not positive term in the middle, negative 2.4t. So there we go. So this means that I need to change this number here as well, and this sign. So that's going to give a plus 0.8, and this is minus 2.4t. All right, so what happens when we distribute this 16, multiply it through the, the box multiplication here? We get negative 16t squared plus, ooh, we've got 16 times 2.4. Well, let, let's multiply that. We've got 16 times 2.4. That's going to be 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 1 plus 2 is 6. Then we got 2 times 16, which is 32. 4 is 8, 3, 3. 38.4. So this is plus 38.4t. And then the last one is 8 times 16. Okay, well, let's see what 8 times 16 is. And 8 times, and 0.8, by the way. Eight. Don't forget the details there. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 1 plus 4 is 12. 128. So we'd have 128, right? Nope. It would be 12.8. And it would be negative. So what does this mean? So, okay, so let's, let's uh, kind of put these things together. We got negative 16t squared plus 38.4t minus 12.8. And here's why we would even do this. You know, before we had it kind of in binomials and a constant out front, and that was cool and all, but now this gives us information. This second number here, let me take that back so it's not scraping in front of it. There we go. That number right there represents our velocity. So what speed was the ball thrown? At 38.4 feet per second. Why seconds? Because we were measuring our time in seconds. And what does this represent? Negative 12.8. That means we were about 12.8 feet below the camera. Now, these are rough estimations, I could tell you. Uh, you know, I think that it was actually a little bit higher than that, maybe not quite 12.8. And I don't know if this was the speed or not, but... You know, we were doing our best here to try and get accurate measurements. But they're not that far off. 38.4 feet per second, that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty accurate as far as how fast it was thrown. And 12.8 feet below the camera. Below, because it's negative. It's down. Negative. See, here's the camera. It's watching the ball going up and down. And then, but it started down here. That's why it's negative. So that's crazy. You can do this like with almost anything. Just think, like you could throw a coin up in the air. You could throw a ball up in the air. You could throw your brother up in the air. Uh, maybe. I don't know how high you could throw that. But anyways, you could throw whatever you want. And as long as you record the times when it passes a certain line going up and a certain line going down, you go back, you do the same process. Multiply those two numbers as if they were roots of a quadratic equation. 
and then you would get these two terms. The middle term with the velocity and the second term with the difference between the camera and the initial height. This is just so cool. I hope you guys find it cool too and I hope you had a good time watching the video. Don't forget I did make a mistake in the middle so it's good to know, uh, you know what not to do the next time as well. How to catch yourself with those errors. Alright, have a good day and we'll see you later.